This is famous TikToker Sabrina Duran Montero. A few months before she was shot dead in broad daylight for messing with one of Chile's most ruthless drug cartels. October 23, 2023. Duran Montero was murdered in southwest Santiago by two cartel sicarios for pissing off their bosses with her TikTok videos. However, the journey to her cruel demise began back in May 2022, when a massive operation led by the Investigative Police of Chile, aka the PDI, resulted in the arrest of Sabrina Duran Montero and her brothers for their involvement in a drug business operating in the city of Peñaflor. Aside from being a TikToker, Sabrina was the head of a drug trafficking organization, which was under scrutiny for its roles in drug collection, distribution, and sales. However, in Las Praderas, her organization was at war with another crime syndicate. This bitter rivalry left this small town in a shadowy reflection of what it used to be, with residents living in perpetual fear of the carnage that could sprout out from any corner. It in turn forced the Chilean government to launch an onslaught on these criminal organizations, deploying a hundred detectives to conduct a raid on every corner, every street, and every home. Consequently, Sabrina Duran Montero was arrested as she attempted to jump through the back window of her little hideout. She was apprehended and charged with crimes relating to narcotics distribution, but putting Sabrina behind bars was literally pushing her one step closer to her grave. During her three-year sentence, Sabrina found herself immersed in the world of TikTok as one of its biggest influencers. She had more than 610,000 followers on her TikTok account under the username at Katrina Guzman, seemingly a reference to notorious Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Another alias used by her was La Ina and the TikTok Narco Queen, in reference to her little business venture. And yes, I'm just as confused as you as to how she managed to maintain that account while incarcerated, but all we can say is that Sabrina had her ways. She also tried having her way when she attempted a botched prison escape by breaking and jumping through the third floor window of her cell. However, she was caught and sent right back in. But you won't believe the path she took once she was let out on supervised probation. <laughs> Sabrina became an influencer, but not just any influencer. She was the kind showcasing plenty of gold jewelry and designer items. To us viewers, it looked like she was living her best life, but to Sabrina, she knew she was in danger. Why you ask? Well, because her users began glorifying her and her double life as a narco queen and TikTok star. It shone light on her underground operations and her lifestyle while making the thousands of people who watched her want to dive into this catastrophic career path. This made Sabrina a huge target, not only to her rivals, but to the Chilean government and her own group. It all pointed to one truth and one truth only. Sabrina Duran Montero needed to go. On the day of the incident, Sabrina was driving to a nail salon while she was stopped by three Sicarios. She was forced out of her vehicle and shot eight times. A bystander captured the moment on camera, showing the high and mighty Sabrina bleeding helplessly to death on the ground. The mass Sicarios then drove her car away from the murder scene and burned it to ashes a few miles away. Ambulances were called and Sabrina was taken to the hospital, but she had lost so much blood on the way that she died en route. As of right now, no arrests have been made in connection to the murder, and the Chilean police have been unable to identify any motive. This could mean Sabrina just might be one of hundreds killed by rampant cartel and gang violence the media never tells us about. Mohit Moor May 21st, 2019 Indian TikTok star Mohit Moore was sitting in a photocopy shop, scrolling through his smartphone when two young men barged in wearing helmets. They pointed two guns at him and fired so many bullets into his body that his teeth were even found in pieces when the police came. This tragic incident was the result of two factors, Moore's TikTok fame and his relation to one of India's most ruthless gangs. 27-year-old Moore was a gym instructor and famous TikToker in the small town of Najafgarh, Delhi. Before his death, he had amassed over 500,000 followers in a record-breaking time of just eight months. And to the average TikToker, that's an almost impossible feat to accomplish, but to Moore, it was just the beginning of his end. April 3rd, 2019, a court in India banned the use of TikTok on the grounds of making its young users vulnerable to abuse. Now, this ban was lifted a few weeks later. However, some people felt the need to put an end to the vices caused by this Chinese-owned app, beginning with its major influencers. 
Moore didn't really fit into this criteria, but his influence on young Indians was very overwhelming. His persona of a Haryanvi bad boy with a good heart was close to his real self, and he labored to make every post better than the last. More emotion, more entertainment, more everything. In one skit, he got out of his car and offered his expensive shoes to a homeless guy who had broken his slippers. In others, he would sing, dance, share jokes, and show off his gym-built body. The point was to keep up the pace, and thousands of people were watching his videos. Some would even recognize him on the streets. Wherever he went, in Najavgad or Dwarka, people asked him for selfies. Girls and boys wanted to be in his videos. Until something interesting occurred. Mohit Moore had helped a friend invest 30 rupee lakh in property through a criminal property dealer named Mangu. Mangu had a chain of legit businesses, but underground he was a crime boss with a lot of enemies one of whom was a drug lord named Dalal. Now out of spite, Dalal ordered the assassination of Mangu, putting an end to his empire. But what Dalal didn't know was that Mangu wasn't the head of his criminal organization. It was another man named Pehelwani. So after Mangu's death, Pehelwani took over everything he had, including his mainstream properties. Now at this point, Moore and his friend occupied one property formerly owned by Mangu. While Moore failed to make the 30 rupee lock payment he was supposed to, Helwani pressured Moore to pay up, but he refused, insisting that he owed Mangu and not him. This left him with no other option than to order the murder of Mohit Moore. One of the men involved in this murder was a teenage gang member in Delhi. According to reports, this teen was recruited by Pelwani after he pestered the crime lord to take him under his wing. To prove himself, Pelwani sent him along with another soldier of his to find more. When they got to his location, they emptied over a dozen bullets into his body, leaving behind a gory scene for the police. In the end, the teenager was arrested and charged with first-degree murder, while Pelwani fled Delhi, knowing the cops would stop at nothing to bring him down. Rodolfo Marquez. Rodolfo Marquez, also known as Fofo Marquez, is a controversial Mexican influencer who has millions of followers across his platform. Born on July 15, 1997, Fofo was undoubtedly born into a wealthy family. There's not a lot of information on his family background, but from what we know, his grandfather made shoes for high-profile dignitaries in Mexico, while his father was one of the owners of Total Gas Station before he passed away. It's obvious he came from a wealthy background, as he poses with luxurious cars, going to clubs with his friends, and living that dream life in Mexico. Now it was because he was sharing his lifestyle on social media that he did garner more than 3 million Instagram followers, making him what those Gen Zs call an influencer. However, Fofo's fame on IG wasn't enough. He decided to navigate his way to TikTok, where he did establish a fan base, but also began getting himself in trouble. A lot of people had eyes on him and, of course, wanted to bring him down. But Fofo didn't care. He had a huge ego and felt he was untouchable. But all that ego came crashing down the moment he messed with one of Mexico's deadliest cartels, the New Jalisco Generation Cartel, better known as CJNG. For all our fans here at Dynasty, we already know you know who these guys are. But for those of you new to class, we'd be doing you a huge injustice if we didn't talk about the severity of this crime syndicate and their ruthless methods. You see, once you're aware of their operations, you'll understand why anyone, even someone as seemingly insignificant as a TikToker, would face serious danger by crossing paths with them. We are the new group, Mata Zetas, and we're against kidnapping and extortion, and we will fight them in all states for a cleaner Mexico. Now, those words were written in a note by the CJNG back in June 2009, after they executed three Mexicans and dumped their bodies in a truck. Mexican authorities initially underestimated these guys as a minor faction within a larger cartel. However, the CJNG swiftly demonstrated its menace by executing 35 members of rival cartels, discarding their bodies in various vehicles along the Mexican highway. The cartel's leader, Nemesio Segueda Cervantes, better known as El Mencho, has gained a notorious reputation, as some may call him the devil in human form. Born on July 17, 1966, El Mencho emerged from a farming family of six siblings, 
and despite this background, he diverged early, seeking a more ambitious and nefarious path to success, one marked by the stain of cocaine and the blood of Mexicans and then in the U.S. where he continued his criminal pursuits. However, he was deported back to Mexico after a Texas-based gang-related sentence. Now, upon his return, El Mencho joined the Milenio Cartel as an assassin. However, the cartel's subsequent fragmentation led him to ally with the Sinaloa Cartel subgroup under Ignacio Nacho Coronel. Now, here he managed drug operations, finances, and violence in the Mexican states of Colima and Jalisco. But after a few more years, he took charge of half the group, renaming it to Cartel de Jalisco. Jalisco Nueva Generacion, or the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. With El Mencho at the helm, the CJNG evolved into one of the globe's most violent criminal entities, donning military-grade equipment that could be mistaken for official Mexican military. They're bad, they're pretty cruel, and they're not to be messed with. So what exactly did Fofo Marquez do to piss off this extremely powerful and corrupt organization? Well, just like almost every TikToker out there subjected to posting daily videos to keep their followers entertained, Fofo was doing the same. But this time, he decided to do something not many have ever done in Mexico. So on July 7th, 2022, Fofo would take three luxury cars and park him in the middle of Matute Rimas Bridge in Guadalajara, Mexico. He came down from one of those cars and started filming the traffic that was building up right behind him. He would say things like, We have closed it for ourselves. This is what I want to demonstrate. What money and power can do. Literally. I closed it here because I wanted to. Illuminati. He went on to brag about how he shut down that bridge for several minutes and how all the cars were honking. He even contemplated doing some TikTok dances while innocent people were just denied access to the bridge. He posted this on TikTok and it wouldn't take long for that video to go viral. A lot of people online would share their disgust at Fofo, raining insults on him for his nonchalance and stupidity. One Twitter user called him a headless imbecile. The mayor of Guadalajara also threatened to press charges against him, with TikTok officially banning his account while they took down the video. In less than 48 hours, Fofo couldn't get into his account and resorted to other social media platforms to tender his apology. He apologized for his childish behavior and even asked for forgiveness from the people. The mayor accepted Fofo's apology but stated that he needed to complete several hours of community service, cleaning beneath that same bridge he blocked. Left with no option, Fofo had to do it. But it would be at this moment that the CJNG stepped in and punished him for his actions. Just when the smoke for his stupid video had gone down, the CJNG reignited the entire case with a message sent to Fofo Mark that message went viral on social media, and it was from an anonymous account named Gente con la Gente, NG, translating to People with the New Generation. The message was also written in Spanish, but it roughly translates to Hello to all the people of Guadalajara. We are the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. As you might know, the influencer or Bag Fofo Marquez dared to obstruct the flow of traffic on the Matute Remus Bridge, which is an act that we do not tolerate. We'll not allow this animal to get away with this. We are in charge of Jalisco and all of Mexico. We would not allow you to come to Guadalajara and do this type of thing. If you ever stepped in Guadalajara, not you nor your money would save you from us. Now, seeing how El Mencho and the CJNG as a whole are driven by intense violence, it could have been anyone who wrote that message to Fofo Marquez. Members of the CJNG believe that El Mencho should be feared and worshipped by Mexicans. So, Fofo pulling such a stunt in a town under direct control of this person was an insult to El Mencho and his authority. Fofo's undoubtedly wealthy. But where his wealth stops is where the CJNG begins. These guys rake in billions annually and control a significant portion of the Mexican government. Their message terrified Fofo because he knew no one could protect him if the CJNG decided to actually kill him. Once that message circulated, things got real. The CJNG doesn't make jokes, and Fofo knew this. He tendered an apology immediately and ran back to his parents' mansion in Mexico to seek refuge. But is this mansion going to help him? Well, the family would hire armed security to guard him 24-7. But even with that, Fofo wasn't safe. These people have taken down the deadliest cartel hitman squads and even battalions of the Mexican army in the past. So really no amount of security is going to do anything. Fofo was getting scared. He couldn't leave his house for days. He stayed away from windows to avoid sniping sniper attacks. He even carried a transceiver around so he could communicate if he was in danger. After a few months, Fofo finally returned to his life, but his actions against the authority of the CJNG altered the course of his life till today. However, as crazy as that sounds, this next one had the guts to insult El Mencho directly. Illuminati 6 
perra madre. A mí me pela la verga el mencho. Digo fuera en cámaras o aquí, cabrón. Así que a mí me pela la madre el mencho. Very strong words, right? Well, those were the words of a guy known simply by his TikTok handle, Illuminati6. Before his account became private, he engaged his followers by accepting the dares they gave him. And on that occasion, one user dared him to insult El Mencho, which he did. In the video, the TikToker wore a slacked black round neck, a black ripped pair of jeans, and was carrying a backpack. He leaned on a light pole and said, Listen well, you son of a bitch. El Mencho can suck my... He then says, I don't sleep like El Parata or El Chanito de Cuyacana, referencing two other social media teenagers that have been executed by El Mencho. He finished off the video by saying, I'm immortal, untouchable, I made a pact with the devil. I came to give you fire, Mencho. I'm not scared to say this. I'll say this with the camera right here. Mencho can suck my... Wow. I mean, you have to applaud the guts of this little young man who felt he could just insult El Mencho. When the video went viral on Reddit and Twitter, a lot of people thought he was part of a cartel to have such confidence in those words, while showing his face in the process. Different users said things like, RIP in advance, this guy's gonna get himself killed, and this is a tutorial on how to disappear. But for some reason, no word was heard from El Mencho or even the CJNG. Some rumors said the teenager wasn't based in Mexico and that's why it wouldn't be easy for CJNG to get to him. It was reported that he lived in Richmond, California, making it hard for them to attack him even if they wanted to. Plus, it would be an attack on foreign land, further complicating things for their organization, so the CJNG didn't respond. But there was a twist. A few days later, the teenager uploaded another video apologizing to El Mencho for his words. He said, I'm sorry for what I said. I wasn't well. I wasn't conscious of what I was saying. It was wrong. That day I woke up stupid. I didn't look at the consequences. I did that for followers. I ask for forgiveness. You and your family are well liked. Mencho, don't kill me. I have a family just like you. I apologize. We all make mistakes. I have psychological problems, sir. Just remember, we like you. The internet went crazy with his apology. Because not too long ago, he was saying something else to El Mencho. People started wondering whether or not El Mencho actually made a personal threat to the teenager, without everyone else knowing, or did he just snap out of his little TikTok fantasy and realize who the heck he was talking to? And while we may never know what happened behind the scenes, this TikToker banished from the platform, and so did his account. There was a video of him posted on another account some weeks later, but apart from that, no one can say for certain what happened to this guy. So do you think they took him out silently? I mean, maybe they did. We don't know. Miss Augustina Uresti. Earlier this week, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel posted a video online in which they directly threatened Uresti. August 2021, TikToker and newscaster Augustina Uresti imprinted her name amongst those in the bad books of the CJNG. She became a target for the criminal syndicate after they released a message calling her biased and a supporter of vigilante groups in Mexico. Miss Uresti is majorly involved with the press, and as of now, what seems to be her TikTok account has been made private. In the video released by the CJNG, six Sicarios are dressed in black clothes and carrying automated weapons, while a seventh man who said he's representing El Mencho sat down and delivered his message to Miss Uresti. The spokesperson said, I'm not against freedom of expression, but I am against anyone that attacks me. He went on to talk about how the cartel would find and kill Miss Uresti for spoiling the name of their organization. Now, according to their side of the story, the vigilante groups Miss Uresti claims are peacemakers in Mexico are in reality drug traffickers in disguise. These vigilante groups have undergone countless attacks on different cartels to paint themselves as heroes to the Mexican government. However, the CJNG believes that they are just another deadbeat group looking to eat from the spoils of the Mexican narcotics underworld. They also claim that only a cartel could yield that type of ammunition that these vigilante groups possessed. However, Ms. Uresti's life became a national treasure because after the CJNG's video went viral, the Mexican president, Obrador, assured the country that nothing was going to happen to any Mexican or even Miss Uresti for speaking the truth. In his statement, he said, It is our responsibility that Mexicans are not intimidated or threatened by anyone. The presidential spokesperson, Jesus Ramirez Cuevas, tweeted a post about the incident. 
saying the government would take the necessary measures to protect any member of the press from speaking their mind. Then Ms. Uresti spoke for herself, saying that she was now under the protection of the government and didn't seem bothered by this statement from the CJNG. Since then, Ms. Uresti has been living her life and there have been no attacks against her. It could be that the CJNG has decided to just let her be, or they could be waiting for the perfect time to strike. Either way, journalism is a tough job in Mexico, and I don't see why Ms. Uresti should blindly put her faith in a government that has sat back and watched hundreds of journalists before her die at the hands of different cartels. So maybe Ms. Uresti is the only TikToker and social media personality to mess with a cartel and get away with it. Maybe one day she will pay the price, and maybe, just maybe, you'll like this video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you never miss on future videos. But the truth, my friend, still remains that messing with the Mexican cartel for clout is one of the worst things anyone can do.